Hello everyone. Today I want to show you how I ended up using Houdini to 3D print stuff and I created a package to do it. It's going to be free, it's very simple, but I just wondered it would be great to show people how I did this. If you are interested, you can maybe get inspired and use this package to do it. The package is a collection of three HDAs, so these are these three components you see. They're really simple. One is to visualize the bed of your 3D printer. You can change the size and check the volume. The other one is this one, check the layers, and the other is the combination to export the file. Like it doesn't get easier than that. For example, this layer component is gonna show you like the layers. It's choosing textures. I'm using the new cops, which are amazing in Houdini. And then you can change the layer height and it's gonna increase or decrease the steps. All this package, all it is, is a helper tool. It's not gonna export any G code for you. Uh, that's, that's why I, I mentioned that it's just simple. It's just a few utilities that uh, help me to check, for example, the size of the model in relation to the bed, like you can see, right? So I can see, okay, this is gonna be more or less the size of the printed object. And you can set uh, your specific bed sizes and you can have the grid as well, just utility to help you out. And the main HDA is this uh, 3DP output where it will just export an o OBJ. Uh, I didn't mention this, but what's great about this package is that besides that it's free for my own, uh, Part, it's also free for your own use uh, because it, you don't need the commercial license of Houdini. As far as I mean, if you're going to use these things commercially, then you have to consider those uh, at your own. Uh, but yeah, it's really straightforward. As you can see, it exports OBJ. Uh, I don't export STL because somehow it's extremely large. So I ended up using OBJs. And then all it is, you can just export and bring this OBJ in the process slicer mostly the most used slicer that I am aware of. And then that's where you're going to slice your model. If you don't know what it is, it basically will calculate what paths your 3D printer need to take in order to generate the object. And that's what you see right now. And then it slices it. That's what it's called. And it creates like these layers. As you can see, the visualization is a preview. It doesn't really represent one-to-one, -one, but it does help sometimes to just have it enough. And, and that's that's it. There is not a lot more to it. Um, as I mentioned, it's a preview of it, just for, for helping yourself. Uh, what I used it a lot for is to not have to go back and forth between the two programs, and I could just check it. For example, something really useful is this, the overhangs. And the overhang in 3D printing is that we cannot print in thin air. So you can see now in the right, we have these blue lines, and in the left is a red. So it shows you what parts are, will be like uh, floating and what you would do then is to print the supports which would enable you to print these overhangs right and you will see now in the slicer it will create like these threads and it will make sure that these floating parts have some support in order to be created uh, that's it it's like very <laughs> straightforward and then you can have for example how much angle uh, you're gonna have the support just called the threshold if you use a Houdini often, it's just a normal direction. It's an angle of the normal and you can set it and it will as well do it. Well, at this point, you might be asking yourself, why am I using Houdini to do 3D printing and design models for it? Basically, the answer is that I didn't want to go to another software that are also paid. There's a lot of programs that can deal with actual uh, proper CAD design, like I think it's Fusion, there is Rhino as well that has Grasshopper, uh, or Hopper, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. And they are also paid. So I was already paying a license. I decided to just stick with it and try to make this work. And it sort of happened. It was a, <laughs> kind of a struggle, but it, it went. Uh, but yeah, in a way, I also learned a lot of 3D modeling in Houdini. There is a lot of poly extrudes <laughs> and like a lot of uh, operations that... You know, like by doing this, I actually understood why sometimes a Boolean doesn't work. And it, all in all, it, it was a, a positive for me. I learned a lot for the software, which is what I wanted. It's a tool I like to use. Uh, so that's the main reason why. This tryout started somewhere like around one year ago when I started working on this project, Balancing Bodies, and I wanted to create a controller. And I wanted to design like the, the object in Houdini and then print it. That's what I ended up doing. It was kind of a hard to do. But it, it worked out in the end, I think. 
And most of it was just designing through that and just learning how to create objects uh, in that way that are also being able to to then work in a physical space, which was quite quite nice. I also did this controller, which was hooked into a touch designer sketch that displayed like traffic simulations. And I had, for example, a parameter to set how many sliders I wanted. I was still not sure how many I would have, and that was super useful to use Houdini for. I could actually change the amount and uh, the size and the fittings. And it, it, to make it parametric, it is more difficult, but it's more useful in the future when you need to make iterations. This one is another project that I work with my girlfriend, Celine. And she's really good at textiles and she wanted to have like uh, little patches of moss. And that's what we ended up with. What is basically a, a two piece connected by a magnet and you can basically wear it or just uh, put it somewhere magnetized. And it has like these two parts. You can just connect them uh, either from the textile and uh, it has a lot of different parts that actually make up the, the model. And as you can see, it has like a part of the base that has one magnet. And then there's like this sort of fitting part that uh, allows the textile to be like added on top. I don't know a lot about textile, so she should talk about that. But this is what Houdini is good for, is to be able to have a lot of different shapes and to have variation. And once you have a system, you can just connect it and just create variations, which is very nice. And that creates an organic feeling to an object that if you do it manually, it's a little bit more difficult to achieve. I also designed my shower shelf using these techniques. It just uh, broke down the one I had. So I ended up was like, well, you know what? <laughs> I'm just going to try to make one. And it actually worked really well. And it was quite straightforward to do. There's like uh, just a few steps, make it uh, look a bit interesting, you know, just to try stuff. And once you have it done, you just can slice it, you print it. And that's that's about it. Of course, I'm oversimplifying it quite a bit and I might make a, a tutorial or even like make a tool, <laughs> like a shelf, <laughs> download my shower shelf tool or something. That would be cool. Uh, but yeah, right now I don't have time to do it, but it, it, it worked quite well. It's still going, you know still there. And finally, the last thing I did is just a research on how to generate puzzles in Houdini, to be honest. And it resulted in a series of nine puzzles that are sequential. So every new iteration, there is the double amount of pieces. So it starts by two, then it goes to four, eight, 16, 32, etc. And the first five are for free. So you can download them in the printables. So if you have the process slicer, I think you can just look for it. It's called Mitosis Puzzle, and then you can just directly print it, download it. And if you're up for the challenge, I made a juggernaut of 512 pieces that I still didn't finish, but uh, that's a bit this the, the package, what's about. I'll make a video about the puzzle more in detail, but just to say, this is where it ended. And I hope that these examples maybe inspires you, or if you were interested on this topic, Maybe it's something that, you know, you want to try out. I encourage it. Uh, you can join the Discord if you want to ask questions or show what you do. I'll leave a lot of links down below. As I mentioned before, you don't need a paid license of Houdini to be able to use this. This package will also be free. Why not to try it, right? And finally, if you are even more interested on this topic, uh, I think a month ago, Junichiro Horikawa uploaded like a video about digital fabrication in Houdini, which goes even more in depth within his own experience. And I really enjoyed it. It's the first time I saw someone else also trying this thing. So I was really excited about it and also pushed me a bit to, you know, finish this and just put it online. Um, so yeah, uh, see you at some point, maybe to talk about the puzzle. Okay, bye.